to it. All right, so we've got an extraordinary show for you today. Uh, James Ian Dolly was instrumental in putting this together. For those of you who don't know James, he's a researcher uh, and does field work investigating UFOs and related phenomenon, UFO, UAP, CE5, consciousness, and more. A direct and inclusive approach to the UFO phenomenon. Ladies and gentlemen, James Ian Dolly. Hey guys, how you doing? We're Thanks doing great, man. Uh, thank you for putting this together. Uh, honestly, we could not have done this without your help. So, so seriously, we appreciate it. Um, thanks. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, James. And, and next on board, we're so excited to have her owning of the UFO sighting tours. Melinda is a researcher, lecturer, abductee, covert human involvement in abduction, my lab research disclosure advocate, ladies and gentlemen, Melinda Leslie. Hi there. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be with you guys today. Uh, I love your smile. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure so cute. to have you. It's so I, damn I'm cute. Genu genuinely excited. That's why. <laughs> good, good. Well, we're excited to have you here as well, Melinda. Thank you for being here. Your next two guests need not an introduction. However, we'll do it anyway. Recipient of the Leeds Conference, International Researcher of the Year, and the UFO Congress Researcher of the Year, he became involved in ufology as the Vietnam War ended in May of 1975 with personal sightings of a UFO type object with lo which locally became known as Charlie Red Star. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Cameron. Good evening and thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure is all ours, sir. Wonderful to have you, uh, Mr. Cameron. Uh, last but certainly not least, he is one of the world's leading researchers, historians, and writers on the UFO topic. Thank you so much for joining us today, Richard Dolan. Hey, guys. Thanks very much. Glad to be on here with everybody. Amazing to have you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so let's get this started. James, we had brushed upon the Invisible College in the Aviary. And I, it, you piqued my interest because I was like, what's that? <laughs> um, and you were like, we can do a whole show just off of this uh, with with Richard Dolan, Grant Cameron, and Melinda Leslie. I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds great, but come on, James, seriously. Uh, when are we going to talk about this? He's like, no, no, no. Well, let's, let's get this room together. I think we can make it happen. I was like, awesome. So, uh, James, let's, I would like you to set up what we're going to be talking about today, and then we'll, let's just see where this conversation goes. Um, uh, take it away, my good sir. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, people may be in, uh, familiar with the Invisible College uh, via the, the book written by Jacques Vallée, Invisible College, uh, in which he kind of broke the silence about academics studying uh, UFOs kind of behind the scenes to, to stay away from ridicule and people, uh, yeah, ridiculing their work. Um, but there, there's other groups that are associated that have overlap with the Invisible College, and that's the aviary and um, the advanced theoretical physics group. And um, I actually got a, a really good quote from Hal Putoff to distinguish um, somewhat of the difference between these groups. Um, they're all important groups. All are, uh, you know, have contributed to where we are now working behind the scenes on this topic in a very credible way. And a lot of them are scientists and academics. Um, so the, the actual quote I got from Hal Putoff to distinguish the Invisible College, the Aviary, and the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group uh, is as follows. And he says, uh, the Invisible College is more academic. The Aviary is just made up, uh, is a made up name of interested I individuals and researchers. And the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group are all highly classified government researchers, all very different groups even though there are overlap in some of the individuals. And, you know, I wanted uh, Rich Dolan, obviously, is is uh, the, probably the lead historian alive on, on the UFO subject. So, uh, you know, he's also had some interactions with these people, um, and he knows the history of, um, of the subject very well. Uh, Melinda Leslie has been uh, interacting in, in, with these individuals and studying all these groups for uh, 30 years, if not more, uh, as well as Grant Cameron. Uh, so I, you know, I, I couldn't think of a better group to put together uh, than these three. 
Um, well, Melinda, I know that you were saying pre-show that that quote was sort of the best quote to set off this conversation. So let's talk about it. Why was that quote the best way to start off this conversation? And 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 what is the because I just saw in the chat like someone just said with a five dollar donation, I'm a dum dum. What is the Invisible College? <laughs> um, you know, in case they haven't read the book, uh, they they're unfamiliar with Jacques Vallée's work. Um, where where do you want to start, my lady? Well. Um, I when James told me uh, just I think it was two days ago about the quote from Hal, I said, James, we got to start off the show that way because I thought that that quote really, um, you know, was was great for a bunch of reasons. First off, Hal's been a member of all the groups, so he's been in it <laughs> from day one and their original meetings in the early '80s. So Hal's been there all along, and. He's pretty, you know, open w with many of us in the field, and that James is able to call him and get clarity on the groups. Now, as soon as James told me, though, I also realized, while he did give an accurate answer to the differences, there was a little bit of a deflection you know, uh, away from the significance of, mm. and that he did emphasize the differences as opposed to the fact that all these groups were connected. And, uh, and there's a reason why he's been in all of them. So there you go. So um, I, I thought it was perfect because it's directly from the source, from one of the members. And, uh, and, and again, while, while it was accurate, there was a bit of a deflection in it away from the, the significance. So, hmm. And then as far as The Invisible College, I admit I did not read uh, Valet's book, The Invisible College. And I did a little bit of research online, but I'm actually the wrong person to ask. So I'm going to deflect on one of the other guys who can answer that more thoroughly, because please educate me as well. Yeah, Grant, I saw you light up a little bit there. Uh, did you uh, did you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I would I would distinguish the, the three groups. The Invisible College is these are all sort of unofficial. It's not like you got a membership card to any of these groups or anything like that. Right. The Invisible College goes back quite a ways, and it's just sort of a hypothetical um, understanding that there are a bunch of academics who don't want to be involved or people who are in the background who are trying to get patents and stuff like that. And that I think Melinda can get into. I mean, now they're sort of running, uh, what was it called, Melinda? There was another name they got for it now that Jim Semivan had about 50 people or more that are in the yeah are involved so that's the academic the the um the advanced physics theoretical which used to be known as the ufo world group written by a new york times reporter about it and then it was the um documents from the group and it was run by john alexander and what they're what he was doing is what they're trying to do now is trying to get funding from the from the government so everybody in the group had a, a top secret sci clearance uh they were on their own dime they were at a at a at a um, secure facility in on the east coast and so that was that group that met in the mid 19th and then the entry was a group that was formed by uh bill and bill moore and jimmy Chandre, who like tom DeLong, had a bunch of government people come to them and say we're for the government we want this thing disclosed we're willing to help you and so what happened in the 1980s is that bill moore and jimmy Chandre gave names to uh, all these uh, uh, government sources. There was 24 government sources, and he gave them all these bird names so they could talk on the phone without identifying who they were talking about in case the the phone was tapped. And um, so, and then later on, there was actually a group called the the Aquarium, where they played off this, where Ron Pendolfi and uh, from the CIA and Dan Smith, his sort of associate, uh, Dan Smith started another group called the Aquarium. So they had the the catfish and the and the sunfish and uh, so it's, it, all these things are artificial groups and uh, they work on you know with each other and and the way i see it at the bottom line of the whole thing is that if you're an academic or a scientist or whatever uh, my impression is that what they do is if they find somebody's got material that's being fed like tom DeLong's being fed bill moore's being fed they all run there to find out what are they being told who's telling them or if there's money involved so mm -hmm. joe firmage had a bunch of money they all appeared and work for Joe Firmage because he had the money and they could finance stuff. So they're guys that are moving around, but they're not really official groups in, in terms of, in fact, the Avery, uh, a number of them identified, they didn't even know they were had bird names until long after um, the, the event. They, they didn't know it was Bill and Bill Moore and Jimmy Shandray who were using the names. It wasn't the, the, uh, the people themselves. Uh, so it was only two yeah. people out of this whole group. 
Go ahead, Linda. Melinda. Yeah, and I just I, I thought I'd clarify, add on top of what Grant was just saying. Yes, and, and as Hal also said, um, the, the nickname was the Avery, and that was uh, Bill Moore and J Jamie Chandere, as my understanding, gave them that nickname again so they could talk about them uh, on the phone and in other circumstances without anyone knowing what they were talking about. Mm. And then. Um, and so they never called themselves that. From the beginning, they were the Advanced Theoretical Physics Working Group or called themselves the Advanced Physics Group. Hmm. So uh, the way they refer to themselves is the, and, and Rich, please, you know, uh, Richard, please uh, join in and, and yeah. add anything. But uh, the, the Advanced uh, Physics Working Group, like I said, the uh, Advanced Physics Group, uh, is what they called themselves, or even just the physics group, and uh, and it was a core group of people, um, and it's remained pretty much uh, to the day, certainly through NIDS and BASS, and and uh, and prior to that, we'll get all into the the timeline and how one group evolved into the next. I'm sure coming up, but uh, I want to give Richard Richard a chance to say something. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, there are a couple of things actually that I. First of all, I'm going to just say I think Grant and Melinda know the details of all of these groups better than I do. But there were a couple of things that I'm going to uh, say a little differently. So the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group is very distinct from the aviary. And as far as the Invisible College goes, that was, that was just Valet's book from 1975. It was early. And uh, that's, that's a, we're talking about that because it's just a great title. Like the Invisible College... <laughs> Let's face it, is a cool name. Yeah, we all we had it is. It, first. it is cool. It is very cool. But valet, yeah. So he's talking about it, and and in connection with the strange and the paranormal, and it's not just UFOs. Like he talks about Uri Geller in the Invisible College, and basically how there's this group of academics uh, out there who are very quietly investigating all these weird things. And by bringing in Uri Geller, he's talking about Stanford Research Institute, and that brings in Hal Puthoff, yeah. who, as Melinda correctly said, he's he's the one guy who's in all of these things. Hal Puthoff right. has consistently he's been in every every it, of these, it, one of these groups. But, but the really important ones to talk about is the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group and the Aviary. So let me just do that. So... Um, Let's do the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group. This was actually written about years ago in a book called Out There by a guy named Howard Bloom in 1990, except he called it the UFO Working Group. And this book, it was a bestseller at the time, and people were like, wow, a UFO Working Group in the Pentagon? Who are these guys? Well, he basically got it kind of right. He got a lot of details wrong, and the name was wrong. So as uh, I think Grant and Melinda were saying, John Alexander, who is still around and he was he's a colonel in the u.s army very interested in psi phenomena starts this group and he, he said this to me personally and i know he has said this publicly a number of times in his lectures so john at the time states that he was convinced that there was a ufo cover-up within the bowels of the pentagon that was his belief and that was the belief of a lot of the people he knew and so his idea was to start this group of absolutely top-notch scientists with security clearances, like Putoff, like uh, Bob Wood. Um, and Richard, though the year is what again, 1975 when he's doing this? I don't, I don't think Doty was part of the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group. Was he? If someone he correct me if I'm wrong, I no. didn't think that no. he was. No, he, no, he wasn't. No. no, 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 he was not. But there were a no. lot of other very, very sharp uh, people. Ron Blackburn was part of it. Who's another colonel with PhD. Um, Kit Green was in it and, and many others. So what Alexander always had said was that the idea was to get these very brilliant people together to deal with UFOs, to put together UFO evidence, gather together. And then his hope was always that the real UFO group, wherever mm -hmm. they were, would find these guys and bring them into the actual program. Uh, this is okay. Alexander's official statement. And what Alexander always said is, well, we looked around and I knocked on every door possible. And I can tell you, he says, there was no other UFO group out there. We were it. And I spoke to one former member of the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group who said to me, that's total BS. 
Yeah. But he was afraid of Alexander. He was terrified of John Alexander. And he He's, he is a scary way. guy. I cannot imagine dealing with John Alexander maybe 30 years younger. <laughs> he, I'm yeah, sure he's, you know, he was intimidating. For, yeah, but, Rich, but I was, agree. I agree. You agree, yes. Um, yeah, with what you're saying, that, that that's BS. <laughs> I, would, I would give up the name of the guy, but uh, why bother? It doesn't really matter. It, so anyway, the... Um, and in fact, this this other man was absolutely convinced and knowledgeable of other deep, deep black budget competing UFO organizations. So the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group went for a few years. Uh, they met out of the, uh, uh, the BDM McLean Secure That's Facility right. in Virginia. Uh, wow. I know Melinda's got a lot of stuff on this, but I'll let her get back into it. So what relationship the did these folks have to the Pentagon at the time? I beg your pardon? What what relationships did these folks have to the Pentagon, or they just had security clearance? Different. They all had security clearances. My Most, I think, were not Pentagon clearances. employees. Okay, Linda, got it. I, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just adding. In, FBI. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, high FBI. high level security clearances. Yeah. So then the aviary, just very quickly, I do want to make they a correction. The FBI security grant. The aviary was not started by Bill Moore and Jamie Chandray, as far as I know. Um, the aviary was started by a colonel named Ernie Keller Strauss. You guys correct me if, if you have better information on this. So Ernie Keller Strauss was a, uh, a, he was a colonel in the Air Force who worked at the Foreign Technology Division at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and had apparently, this is the 1986, so wow. it's the same year that the Advanced Theoretical Physics Group started meeting as well. <laughs> 85 was their first meeting. Oh, okay, meeting. thank you. So the first aviary meeting, as far as I understand, yeah. was 1986. And it was Keller Strauss in his home. And he brought in people like Robert Collins, who was an Air Force captain. He did bring in uh, Bill Moore, UFO researcher, and Jamie Shandery. They were invited, both of them with certain intelligence community connections. He brought in Hal Puttoff. He brought in John Alexander. So more of the same names. Uh, Kit Green was part of this group. Um, oh, uh, uh, who's the senator, uh, the aide to Claiborne Pell, uh, Scott Jones. C.B. Scott Jones, it. yes. Yeah, and there were, there were quite okay. a few others. And all of these people were, they all had security clearances too, or if they didn't, then they were brought in at like, I don't know about Chandler and more, but they were all brought in. They all started talking and sharing stories about UFOs. And I know for a fact that Keller Strauss, who was the original leader of this group, like he had stories about what was going on in Nevada, alien bodies, um, probably a lot of the things that Leonard Stringfield, the researcher back then, was digging up, you know, stories of crash retrievals and alien bodies. And I know Keller Strauss was deep into that as well. And all of these guys were sharing all of these stories, basically campfire stories. And, I, you know, with, with the, these types of guys with security clearances, you have to assume they're all – they're all willing to share, but they all have to be careful, I assume, yeah. like as to what they're sharing. They don't want to get into trouble. So they all kind of know the game. But that's, and so Moore and Chandere, who were absolutely talking about this on the phone, were afraid of their phones being tapped and all of that. And so when they would talk about members of this loose group, they did give them bird names and <laughs> either Moore or Chandra, one of them, I guess, Nick, Nick said, well, it's the aviary. It's like, ah, that's the bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bird it's like a bird sanctuary. Oh, yeah. It almost sounds like a in-the-closet secret UFO club that is hoping to get invited to a bigger party without letting anybody yeah. know about it. <laughs> that's definitely yeah, the advanced absolutely. theoretical physics group, without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. That's a good way to put it. And so, and so, Melinda, did they... Did they get an invite? <laughs> I mean, did they grant, garner the intention of the people that they wanted? Um, well, they definitely had their attention. Um, and they, most of them currently, I think it's really important to reference their employers at the time. Quite a few of them were with major aerospace companies heading up the black project mm -hmm. departments or involved in those project departments with those major aerospace companies, as well as um, other scientific organizations and, and, uh, and whatnot. And that's why they had their security clearances in doing those jobs. Um, 
those companies knew they were there. They mm -hmm. were there with the agreement of those companies. Um, I know both Jack Houck, who early on is one of the reasons I really got into this and know about it. He was a friend of mine and he was Bob Wood's boss at McDonnell Douglas at the time of the advanced systems analysis department at McDonnell Douglas. And, uh, and so Jack and Bob were both there and McDonnell Douglas certainly knew that they were there is my understanding. So, so it, it was kind of under the table, yes, and yet it was with the agreement. I mean, they had had it at BDM Corporation in Virginia, um, right. and had it in a in a file skiff, had it in a secret room. So, well, and like Hal said, they were highly classified. Um, I think that's a very accurate statement, right, James? What what was his exact wording that he said that they were uh, classified then and still are, or something like that? Yeah, well, he said he said specifically the difference between all the groups is that everyone in the advanced theoretical physics group are ha, have a high uh, security clearance, but the the other groups were a mix of people who some did and some didn't. Um, but for sure, the, the physics group, I mean, were all specifically people with high high security clearances. Yes, and and I think it's important to yeah. note. Well, uh, one thing I would point out is that. Sorry, Grant. Go ahead. Go ahead, Grant. He's on a little delay. No, I, I think it's important to point out that both Melinda got the notes from Jack Houck when he died. His uh, so Melinda got the notes, the, the um, Advanced Physics Theoretical Working Group. And in fact, I started using it. They're still calling it the UFO Working Group. And then when I announced what the name was, then John Alexander said, well, it, it was called the Advanced Physics Theoretical Working Group and nobody had notes. Then I said, I got notes. Then he said, nobody's supposed to take notes. But Melinda has Jack Houck's notes after he died. Uh, she went through his files and got them. I was given uh, the notes. Um, I was given um, Oak Shannon, who if you're familiar with the Wilson Leak, he's a player in the Wilson Leak. I was given his notes. Uh, and I was told that we had released the notes. He has not died, so I have not released the notes, but the cover page showed that it's part of G, and um, I have the actual clearance of the two guys going into this, and it's a top secret restricted document. And so what happened was when I got the notes, I sort of announced this first at Eureka Springs, this would be about 2003 or four, and suddenly I got a uh, call from Hal Putoff. He said, yeah, I understand you've got uh, notes um, of a, a meeting. Can you tell me who was at the meeting? So I sent him all the names except for Oak Shannon's name, and I never heard from him again. Uh, but of the notes, and what, what the notes to me is what John, the story John is putting out, from what I can tell from the notes, uh, they weren't getting anywhere. They, they knew uh, Bobby Rainman with back engineering, but uh, this went from topic to topic, all these notes, and they had nothing significant that I could see in these notes. Melinda can talk about what was in Jack Houck's notes, but we both have the notes with the names of the people. So we know exactly who was in the group and there was about 20 people. I, I may differ from you in that there's, at least in what I have, there's extremely significant stuff. It outlines 